and ignorance. A person is not always pure, but even if he should be pure in the mode of passion, he will simply remain on this earth as a king or a rich man. But because there are mixtures, one can go down also. People on this earth in the mode of passion or ignorance cannot forcibly approach the higher planets by machine. In the mode of passion, there's also the chance of becoming mad in the next life. The lowest quality, the mode of ignorance, is described here as abominable. The result of developing ignorance is very, very risky. It is the lowest quality in material nature. Beneath the human level, there are eight million species of life, birds, beasts, reptiles, trees, etc. And according to the development of the mode of ignorance, people are brought down to these abominable conditions. The word tamasaha is very significant here. Tamasaha indicates those who stay continuously in the mode of ignorance without rising to a higher mode. Their future is very dark. There is an opportunity for men in the mode of ignorance, the modes of ignorance and passion, to be elevated to the mode of goodness. And that system is called Krishna consciousness. But one who does not take advantage of this opportunity will certainly continue in the lower modes of nature. Om Jnana Timiran Dhasya Jnana Shalakaya Dhasur Vinitam Jena Asmai Shri Udave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Kishtam Sasvavitam Jena Bhutale Vayakuruna Vatamayana Dhati Shapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sadrashatam Sadhanavaratam Samasrivam Sadhetam Sadhavadhutam Prajnasaitam Sadhetam Yadivam Shri Rapa Krishna Padam Sagaradvita Sri Vishakhan Vitaasya He Krishna Arguna Sindho Dina Vandho Jagarate Lokesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tata Kanchana Gauraki Radhe Vrindade Shri Vishakhanus Shri Krishna Chaitana Prabhupada Jananda Shri Advaita Adhara Shri Vasadi Gauravatarina Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Urvam Gachchanti Satvastha in this chapter, Lord Krishna discusses that there are three material qualities that affect the lives of human beings. Uh, these qualities are called goodness, passion, and ignorance. And they mix together as colors mix together. As we have three primary colors, um, red, blue, and yellow, which mix together to form so many different colors. So
So we have these three qualities, which mix together in innumerable combinations and affect people's lives. Here the summary is given of the effects of the three modes essentially in their pure form. Urdvam Vajchanti Sattvastha. Those who develop goodness go up. Madhye Tushtanti Rajasa. Those in passion stay in the middle. And Jaganya Gunavritista and Ho Vajchanti Dhamsa. Those who develop ignorance go down. This up, down, and middle refers generally to different planetary systems. It's understood from Vedic literature that, of course, we know there are different planets, but according to the Vedic knowledge, these planets are not simply chunks of <coughs> matter floating in space, but they are residences for different um, living beings. Specifically, there are heavenly planets, um, the moon, Venus, and others are considered heavenly planets, up to the topmost planet, Brahmaloka. And there are, uh, the planet on which we're situated now is considered a middle planet, and there are lower planets also, which are considered hellish planets, because of the um, mode of life that people are forced to undergo there. In the third canto of Sriman Bhagavatam, Lord Kapildev gives uh, evidence or a reasonable argument for accepting that these uh, heavenly and hellish abodes are not merely, merely allegorical. He points out that even on earth we see different qualities of residence and different qualities of life. Uh, here in Orlando we find that there are um, very exclusive gated communities with all sorts of uh, golf courses and um, swimming pools and all sorts of amenities. And then there are those who get to live next to the railroad tracks and have the pleasure of listening to the uh, trains go by. <laughs> and uh, perhaps live amidst strewn beer bottles and beer cans and that sort of thing. And then there are those in the middle. Taking things to still greater extremes. There are people who live uh, amidst the perpetual threat of, of fire and torture. If you go, well these days it's Iraq or Afghanistan, at any moment a plane or a tank or what have you could arrive and deliver uh, fire on your doorstep. Uh, and considerably worse. So there are those who in, uh, in this world have to suffer <coughs> miserable um, pain, miserable torment. And there are those who live quite uh, luxuriously. So these differences are due to mm, differences in the highest credit or debit of the living being. Karmana Daivane train. According to our previous activities, we get a certain credit of um, punya or piety, or on the other hand, debit, uh, a lack, a, 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 a debt even. So according to our um, situation, we attain a higher or lower position. Or here it's analyzed in terms of the qualities that we've acquired. The person who's um, cultivated goodness 
can really rise to a very exalted level. We think of people as being good people because they're they're friendly, or they're they're honest. But the real mode of goodness is a very high state of human existence. To be truthful, to be tolerant, uh, to be self-controlled in the senses of the mind, uh, to be austere. Samodamo tapa socham shantir. Arjavam, to be always straightforward, to have knowledge and spiritual realization. This place is one of a very high stage of existence. We can think of the great Vedic sages who led a very simple way of life, uh, many of them just living on the natural, what they naturally found in the forest, and not being interested in any sort of material comforts, but really focusing on spiritual realization as the purpose of their life. So such uh, exalted persons are in the mode of goodness. Those who are always uh, working hard to acquire and enjoy are in the mode of passion. They great desires, <coughs> longings, they have great aspirations, and they, they're always in action, working and doing and planning and scheming and trying to get what it is that they desire. And below those are, are the persons of ignorance who don't care. They're dull. They're often drunk, intoxicated, mad, <clears throat> lethargic, uh, foolish, uh, practically like animals. <coughs> so they're in the mode of, of ignorance. Sometimes they're so ignorant that they don't know whether their clothes are on or off. They don't know whether they're, whether it's Tuesday or Thursday. They're really gone. So here, Lord Krishna says that those who cultivate goodness can be elevated to the higher planets, to a higher situation of life, to the abodes of the uh, demigods. And those who are in the mode of passion stay here. So one may think, well, all right, so it seems like I'm pretty much in passion. But it's not so bad because it means I'll come back again as a human being. Prophet says here, well, maybe as a king or a rich man. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> um, but there are problems there. The first problem, of course, is that it's not guaranteed that one will come back as a king or a rich man. We're not purely in the mode of passion there's likely to be some contamination of ignorance there, some, perhaps some goodness. But with all of this uncertainty, there's no guarantee that one will come back in such a uh, covetable life as that of a king or, or a wealthy person. <coughs> one might come back as a king, one might come back as someone living in the projects or the uh, busties, the slums, or worse than slums. Uh, one may come back diseased, one may come back in so many miserable conditions. So he's still a human being, but human life, as we know, can get enormously tough, uh, enormously miserable. So uh, there's that risk. Apart from that, when we talk about coming back in human society, whether as a beggar or as a king, we're talking about coming back. And coming back means, again, going through the same cycle of birth and death, old age and disease, that we're going through now. It means we haven't solved our problem. We're just going through one more round, 
and then another more, another round, and we don't know in the next life, suppose the next life I come back as a human being, but I may misuse that life and then in the next one go down uh, to the lower planets or as Prabhupada mentions to the lower species. One come, may come back as a tree, or may come back as a dog, or may come back as <coughs> any uh, one of so many millions of species of life, and then have to gradually evolve one species after the next, after the next, after the next, in a process of millions of lifetimes. So this is the, the failure of the human form of life. Uh, Prahlad Maharaj says, that the human form of life, durlava manava janma, tadapi yadruvam artadam, the human form of life is rarely obtained. Out of 8,400,000 species enumerated in Vedic literature, there are only 400,000 species of human life. How many are there? How many human beings are there? If you consider all, all of Orlando with its infinite number of bugs, trees, uh, fish, <coughs> birds, um, so many um, plants, grass, so many other forms of living beings. If they could all vote, your human view of vote would be insignificant. <laughs> so the, the vast number uh, are non-human, uh, a small number of living beings after evolving through millions of lifetimes, get the opportunity for the human life. And the human life is, is meant for self-realization, because that's the unique prerogative of human life. <coughs> the animals, the birds, the trees, and so on, can't ask themselves why they're here, what the purpose of their life is, how they should live their life to achieve freedom from material existence. <coughs> this is all beyond the ken of the other species. It's the human beings who have the opportunity. But after, therefore, Prahlad Maharaj calls the human life artadam, a life in which one can get the greatest benefit. But if we uh, throw away the opportunity, we don't know when we'll get such an opportunity again. We may come back again in human society, but we may not. Or we may come back in the human situation where there's really not much chance for spiritual inquiry. We're simply work, 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 or dodge bullets. Huh? And where's the, where's the chance? So, now we have the human form of life. Now we have some information. Or we've heard something about spiritual realization from Bhagavad Gita and other sources. Now we have uh, cultivated Krishna consciousness to some extent. So now is the time for achieving spiritual realization. Uh, because we don't know what the future will bring. Unfortunately, most of human society is uh, situated in the lower two modes of material nature, the modes of passion and ignorance. And therefore they're busy trying to acquire and acquire and acquire and then spend and spend and spend and enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Uh, or they're troubled, uh, violent, confused, stupid, uh, or some mixture, typically, of these two lower modes of nature. To find a person who's good, according to the Vedic standard, has become a rare experience. You know, the human society is mostly consciously cultivating a way of life that's passionate and foolish, and thinking that it's very nice. <coughs> Passion <coughs> is extolled. A person's passionate, well, what's wrong with that? It's, it's a good quality. It's taken as uh, 
a wonderful thing if a person is passionate about work, if he's passionate about his family, if he's passionate about this, if he's passionate about that. It's taken as advancement. But real advancement is not found in the mode of passion. It's found in the mode of goodness, where one is calm and sober and can discriminate between one thing and another, where one can understand what is beneficial and what is not. I want to speak of the mode of ignorance, which is just, uh, as Krishna mentions here, abominable. Jaganya, uh, abominable mode of ignorance. <coughs> But Srila Prabhupada mentions that there's a way of coming to the mode of goodness or transcending the mode of goodness, and that's Krishna consciousness. Later in the chapter, Krishna will say, Mamcha yogya vacharina, bhakti yogina sevade, sagunam samadhi charitam dhamadhyaya kalpade. If one understands Krishna, and engages fully in Krishna's devotional service, then Sadhanam Samadhi Chaitan, he transcends all three of the qualities of nature, ignorance, passion, and goodness. And Brahmabhuyaya Kaupate, he comes to the spiritual platform. Um, he comes to the spiritual platform. Brahmabhuta Prasannatma and Sochuti Nakamskati. On the spiritual platform, there's no hankering, there's no lamenting. In material life, there's always hankering for what we don't have, lamenting for what we've lost. But on the spiritual platform, nothing to hanker for, nothing to lament about. Samasarveshu Bhuteshu, one becomes even-minded, seeing everything uh, dispassionately. And in that spiritual status of life, one can go still further and attain to the devotional service to Krishna. As Krishna says in the seventh chapter, um, what is that? Um, that one who surrenders to me becomes mamamaya dhiracaya, dhiriyeshu mamamaya dhiracaya, the, these qualities of material nature are very powerful. They're not just, well, what would I like to be in? Should I be in goodness today, or would I rather be in passion? Would I, is it better to be in ignorance today, or maybe a little goodness would be good, like trying on a new hat or, or a, a different necklace? It's not such an easy thing. These modes are very powerful. Daivi, daivi means divinely empowered. Daiviyesha gunamayi. Uh, another meaning of guna, or uh, one meaning is mode or quality, and another meaning is rope. We're tied by these qualities. Trigunamai. Uh, perhaps if you've spent any time on uh, a shipyard or wharf, you see these uh, nautical ropes, which consist of three ropes together. Very powerful because you have to hold the whole ship um, to the dock. So they uh, twine three strong ropes together and they get one very strong rope. So the qualities of material nature, the three of them twined together in our lives, uh, bind us to material existence. We're bound by ignorance, we're bound by our passions, and we're even bound by the quality of goodness. A person thinks, yes, I'm living a natural way of life. I'm feeling uh, satisfied by the knowledge that I acquire. I don't need material things. I'm happy with knowledge. And so in this way, he becomes tricked into thinking, well, oh, the material world is not so bad after all, because I can live in this very natural, very peaceful uh, way. Uh, and in that way, Maya tricks him by the mode of goodness also. What to speak of the modes of passion and ignorance. On Daivi Mamamaya Drachaya. Therefore Krishna says that to surpass, to overcome, to transcend these three qualities is very difficult. Uh, 
directly, and they're very difficult to overcome. But mami vie prapadyante maya vintantante. If one surrenders to Krishna, then one can very easily cross beyond these modes, because Krishna is the controller. Maya jyakshena prakriti suryate svachyatra. The qualities of material nature are under Krishna's control. So when we surrender to Krishna, then we can get free from these qualities. Otherwise, simply trying to get situated where we want to be in the qualities of nature will be very difficult. The material nature can always fool us, can always uh, pull a fast one on us, and we'll get bewildered. But by surrendering to Krishna, we come under Krishna's protection, we get Krishna's help, then sadhana samati chaitam prabhu dhai kovate mahami viye prabhanyate mahami vaturanti turanti means one transcends. So this is the real business of human life, uh, to transcend the bondage to these three qualities of material nature entertain the transcendental uh, platform by being engaged in the service of Krishna. This chanting brings us to that transcendental platform by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Hare. Ram, 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 Hare. One doesn't have to undergo difficult speculative methods or heavy tapasya austerity. By uh, chanting seriously and sincerely, one can come to the spiritual platform and make one's life successful. All right, there are some questions. My question is. Uh if you could please explain uh, this karmande vadikarasya, which is like this more three modes are mostly related with our work style, work patterns and all. Depending on what people sometimes go into ignorance and passion and goodness, and the work demands these things also most of the time. So if you can explain that uh, sloka, uh, I would be very to explain the relationship between work and the modes of nature. Well, karma nyevadi kāda ste, ma pale shukadachana, ma karma pale hetu, ma te sankos pa karma. Karma nyevadi kāda ste, adhikāra means uh, right. Everyone has a right to work, karma nyevadi kāda ste. And of course people take that as the whole message of Bhagavad Gita, do your duty. <laughs> Um, work, which the ass has also understood to be the essence of life, um, work hard. Um, but ma paleshu kadachana, Krishna says work, but you're not entitled to the result. Um, just like a bank teller, bank teller may take in a million or hand out a million, but if he takes in a million, it's not his million. He's entitled to perform the transactions, but he's not entitled to take the money. So everything ultimately belongs to Krishna, and therefore Krishna says, ma paleshu kadachana, don't be attached to the result. In the Ishopanishad also it said, tena chaktena punjita magada krishna spittana. One is entitled to take as much as he actually needs, but not more. So ma paleshu Kadachana and Ma Karma Palahetu. Don't think that you've actually created the result of the work. Uh, you may work like anything and get nothing. Or you may not work very hard at all and get very good results. The result is finally up to Krishna, not up to us. And Ma, uh, what is that? Ma Karma Palahetu or work? Not as uh, some goes for karma. And don't be dull, Krishna says. Don't be attached to doing nothing. So everyone has to work, karma, nyeva, Now what is that work? 
That's explained later in the Bhagavad Gita, that there are four occupations, Chatur Varnam Maya Shushtam, Guna Karma Vipakasha. There's work as a Brahmin, there's work as a Kshatriya, work as a Vaishya, and work as a Shudra. The Brahminical work is considered to be in the mode of goodness, especially it's the work of spiritual realization or helping others in spiritual advancement, uh, becoming learned, uh, helping others become learned, uh, performing sacrifices <coughs> and helping others uh, in sacrifice, uh, giving charity and accepting charity. And these are uh, Brahminical duties which are considered to be in the mode of goodness. The activities of the Kshatriyas uh, involving uh, administration and protection are generally in the mode of passion. The, uh, we see the great passionate wars and passionate conflicts and uh, great uh, endeavors to uh, expand territory and so on. So these are all in passion. And the work of the Vaishyas, the agricultural people and people involved in business and trade, is considered to be in the mixed modes of passion and ignorance. <coughs> and the work of the Shudras is work in ignorance. They just do what they're told. Uh, they don't do a whole lot of thinking. <coughs> do this line, do that line. <coughs> so generally, people will fall naturally into one of these categories. In the Soviet Union, they tried to make a classless society, and still some people were teaching in universities, and some people were uh, driving the garbage trucks. So you can't really stop it. Krishna says, Maya Shrishtam, these, these Divisions were created by me, so they're everywhere in the world. They may be recognized or not recognized, but somebody will be working in ignorance, someone in mixed ignorance and passion, someone in passion, someone in goodness. So these qualities of, of work uh, are difficult to escape even. Krishna told Arjuna, you're a Kshatriya by nature. Even if you think, well, well, I'll just leave the battlefield and not fight, I'll take off begging. Uh, no, you'll be forced by your nature to, to work anyway as a Kshatriya. You'll come back fighting uh, just on a different battlefield or in different circumstances. So the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Stane stata sutitikatam talam bhagavanam uh, He doesn't advise us to try to change our occupation from Vaishya to Kshatriya, or Kshatriya to Brahman, or Brahman to Shudra, or Shudra to Brahman. But to stay in our position, <coughs> and uh, Shruti Gatam, uh, to hear the transcendental sound vibration of the holy name of Krishna, or Krishna you know, subject matters, Krishna Kata, and that will bring us to the transcendental platform. Uh, Krishna says, Shriya it doesn't really matter whether one is a woman or a uh, shudra or a vaisha or a brahmin. It doesn't, you know, sannyasi or this or that. Uh, anyone who engages in his pure devotional service can attain the supreme destination. That means that anyone can go beyond the modes of material nature. He may work according to the qualities that he has acquired conventionally, but he becomes transcendental to those qualities. The example is given of a coconut. When it dries up, it's still inside the shell, but it's disconnected. You shake it, you can hear the, the coconut rattle inside, because it's become disconnected from the shell. In the same way, iha yasya harir dasye karmana manasa gira Nikolaj Bhaktivas Tasu Jiva Mukta Sutra. Anyone who engages body, mind, and words in the service of Krishna is a liberated person, even in this 
in this life, even in this world. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu encourages in, us in that way, not to try to change our occupation, but to change our consciousness, to Krishna consciousness. Okay. Anything else? Another question? So when uh, one takes to devotional service, it's understood that uh, one is not completely free from these modes of nature. So one is practicing the bhakti, bhakti devotional service, under these modes. Uh, so how does one, let's say, even though we understand one is bound by these modes, and uh, even when one is practicing bhakti, still one is under the influence of these modes. So how does one, let's say, ultimately become free? Even while practicing bhakti, we may still be influenced by these modes. So how does one become free from them? Yes, Lord Kapildev analyzes in the third canto of the Bhagavatam that there's devotional service affected by passion, there's devotional service affected by ignorance, um, there's devotional service affected by goodness. Um, in passion and ignorance, for example, one is uh, arrogant toward others. He's, he's a devotee, but he's uh, proud and, and um, aggressive toward other devotees. Uh, so he's, he recognizes that I'm Krishna's servant, but he doesn't appreciate other servants of Krishna. And so he maintains this, this pride and arrogance which are produced from compassion and ignorance. He's a sort of a separatist. He sees himself separately He's from others. He doesn't see that others are also engaged in the service of the same Supreme Lord. He doesn't know how to cultivate friendship with devotees and loving relationships with devotees. Uh, nor does he know how to deal compassionately with other living beings. Uh, so he's considered to be still affected by the lower qualities. So that's natural because we're coming from a contaminated situation. One has to be purified on Nityam Bhagavata Seva by regularly hearing uh, Srimad Bhagavatam and by regularly serving a pure devotee by uh, the grace of Krishna and by the grace of the pure devotee one can get free from these qualities. Krishna says that Sadhguru Samadhi Chaitanya may not happen overnight that one wakes up the next morning and he's free from the modes of nature but if it's a at what you would probably call the a gradual cleansing process. If we stick to that process with confidence, with determination, with enthusiasm, and so on, then we can expect to finally achieve the result. Okay? Everyone in Kali Yuga is Shudra. So does it mean that we're predisposed to be in the mode of ignorance? Yes, it does. So then how, how can other classes exist? Yes, everyone is inclined toward the mode of ignorance. <laughs> Therefore, in Kali Yuga, even the other classes hardly exist. Someone's a teacher, for example. What is teacher? Teacher means Brahman. What is Brahman? Shuchi. He's pure pure in his consciousness, he knows how to control his mind, knows how to control his senses, he's interested in self-realization and uh, pursuit of knowledge. So that's the Brahman. Uh, so what are the teachers in Kali Yuga? Uh, chain smokers, uh, drunkards, they'll get together for a scientific conference and they'll say, well, it seems to me like such and such. And the other says, well, yeah, I suppose you can do that. <laughs> So they're shudras, but they've taken the position of Brahmins, and therefore the world is misled. The so-called intellectuals, the so-called 
and their uh, <coughs> Brahmin means he'll never be employed by anyone. Those who are actually Brahmins, they maintain their independence. Even Chanakya Pandit, after whose name Chanakya Puri in uh, Delhi is, is uh, named, the Prime Minister of uh, Maharaj Chandra Gupta, happened to be a Brahmin. So although he was a, Bra a Brahmin, he was living in a hut. He wasn't going to be beholden to the king, take a salary and become a, a dog for the king. So he was his own man. And when the king questioned his advice on some occasion, all right, come on. Not you're paying my salary, um, whatever you want to hear, just tell me. <coughs> oh, you don't like my advice, get lost. That's a Brahmin. But now, the Brahmins, they look for so-called Brahmins, they're looking to work for the government. The government engages them in uh, high-tech research by which to in, uh, improve military capabilities. Uh, and the Brahmin has to do it because he, he has to make a living. So he's actually a shudra. He's a, an employee. But he's taken the post of a so-called intellectual. Similarly, the Kshatriyas. The political heads of state are supposed to be men of uh, high caliber. They're supposed to be Rajarshis. They're supposed to be just one step down from the Brahmins. But you look at the so-called uh, heads of state now, and what are they? Uh, somebody just got bumped from his position or had to leave his position because he was addicted to a $5,000 an hour prostitute. What's that? That's a, uh, is that something like Maharaj Yudhisthira or, or Arjuna or, or uh, Maharaj Dasarat, the great Kshatriyas that we hear about? These are dogs, uh, the pres presidents and kings. And what are they? They're womanized, <coughs> drunkards, meat eaters. Uh, and uh, they've been bought and sold by vested interests a thousand times before they take office. So they're just order carriers for whoever's paying their campaign bills. And the Vaishas, the so-called <coughs> agriculturists, busy raising tobacco and killing animals. What kind of Vaishas? Well, people take the position of the higher <coughs> sections but without the qualification. That's how Kali Yuga gets started. Shringi, the son of a Brahmin, was uncultured because he was puffed up. Even though he had some Brahminical power, he didn't have Brahminical culture. And so he was so brash as to curse a pious king, Friction Maharaj. And in this way, invite Kali Yuga to um, invade human society. So we look out and we see different classes. But the, 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 they're different classes of shudras. Uh, they're hardly qualified to be more than that. <coughs> Some other question? Mm -hmm. Maharaj, you told uh, about different classes of people who perform abominable uh, activities, so-called Brahmins performing bad activities. Similarly, what is the fate of a person who, after coming to Krishna consciousness, performs abominable activities, but feels greatly tries to rectify. We talked about people in the higher sections who perform abominable activities. But what about a person who comes to Krishna consciousness and performs some abominable activity but then regrets it? Krishna says, Sadhureva Samantakya. Api chait sudhura chayro vajute mahamana Devotional service is so powerful and so pure, pavitramiya vidyate, that even if a person who's performing Krishna consciousness performs <coughs> some act which may be considered abominable, sudurachar, not just durachar, but sudurachar, really abominable activities, sadureva, samantabhya, he has to be considered a saintly person. Why? Samyakya does he die inside? Because his determination is to serve Krishna. So it's not an excuse that because I'm a devotee, I can do every 
category of uh, abominable activity. It's okay. Namnat baladya svihi bhavudhi. To perform sinful activities on the strength of chanting Hare Krishna and being a devotee is a great offense against the holy name of the Lord. But if by accident a devotee may be caught by the modes of material nature and do something wrong, he's still considered a saintly person. Shupram Bhavati Dharma, very quickly he'll come to the right, he'll resume, he'll rectify his, his behavior. Okay. Yes. 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 you were uh, saying how this Maha Mantra is a means for transcending the three modes. Um, and uh, having joined in the early days in 1968, you saw how witness history, how Prabhupada came, and so many people from different modes were attracted, and there was what's uh, come to be known, the Hare Krishna explosion. So now we see through history that the seems to be some <coughs> change, at least in America, uh, not as many devotees are being made, or um, the movement isn't as vibrant, obviously. Srila uh, <coughs> Prabhupada's person. <coughs> but uh, do you feel that there's a, a change in the, uh, the uh, state of the general public, and, or uh, that there needs to be some change there's in... There's no question of blaming the general public, probably. Quote the hill, the saying, the dancer blames the hill for being crooked. The idea is that you're supposed to dance, but if the ground is uneven, you say, well, I couldn't dance because the ground was uneven. No, it's your business to dance and not criticize the ground. So the people may be whatever they may be. They weren't so great when Prabhupada came. He, he, his evaluation, his assessment was, that they're all affected by passion and ignorance, that they're practically like animals. So, more or less the same situations going on. From one point of view, it may be people may be more receptive. From another point of view, they may be less receptive. Or they may be, there may not have been very much change. But it's not a question of them, it's a question of us. Prabhupada went to Russia and made devotees abroad and had an interest in making devotees in China. And people in China have become devotees. People in Africa have become devotees. So if they can become devotees in these places, why not the United States? It's not um, that things have changed so much that Krishna consciousness can no longer be spread. So it's up to us. Jesus, uh, do you think, Maharaj, that um, there needs to be some some devotees say, oh, you, you have to change the approach a little bit, different circumstances? Oh, packaging is another thing. But the substance is what works. It's not ultimately that I've given this spin or that spin. I have to deliver the, the goods. If we distribute this literature, we chant the holy name of Krishna. Uh, of course, things should be done in an intelligent way so that people will be attracted. Um, there are questions of strategy and this and that. But the main thing is to deliver the goods. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Jayakuta Kama Krishna Pradesh. Wherever you go, wherever you meet, tell them about Krishna. So if you do that, some people will be interested. Tell me more about Krishna. Some people won't be interested. But if you keep your mouth shut, nobody will be interested. <laughs> to say the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu you said Prithiviti Achei Nandra Anigram Prithiviti Achei Nandra Anigram 
to my triple channel living in every village and town my name will be known. He said, that's up to you to do it. In other words, someone else will do it and take the credit. Why do you take the credit? Yeah. 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 Yeah.